week's episode of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Diamond is Unbreakable. Koichi Hirose officially goes Super Saiyan as his stand hatches from its egg, taking the form of a creepy larval lizard monster with the power to implant manga sound effects in the body of whoever it touches. My opinion of Koichi Hirose has changed so much since the first episode of the series. I thought he was just going to be the goofy Krillin sidekick of the series. And somewhere down the line, he turned into Teen Gohan. It's really, really strange. In this week's episode, we finally get to see his stand hatch from the egg. And what a form it is. Not only that, but we're also formally introduced to Tamami Kobayashi, who is a complete douchebag. Basically, this guy is the ultimate con artist, and that's because he has a stand power himself. He actually met Keicho Nijimura a couple of weeks ago, and he was imbued with his stand power, which allows him to put this lock on someone's heart. And the more guilty they are, the larger this lock is going to get, and it's going to cause them so much grief that they'll actually want to kill themselves the bigger and heavier that it gets. Basically, what he does is he tricks people into feeling guilty about something so that he can actually get stuff off of them, whether it be money, their house, their land, and he does it in a number of really messed up ways. In fact, the way this week's episode opened up, I thought it really went into some really messed up dark territory because it all opens up with Koichi riding his brand new bike through the streets when suddenly he runs over this bag, which manages to make him bust ass in the middle of the street. He then looks back and realizes that the bag is bleeding profusely and there appears to be a kitten inside of this. My first thought was, damn, that's fucked up, but you know what? That's not surprising, because for some reason, the author of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure really has it out for animals. Cats, dogs, he just wants to see them get killed in the most violent fashions. It's not until Josuke and Okuyasu actually show up that we realize that this was not a cat, but it was actually a stuffed mechanical cat that he used to actually trick Koichi. Basically, he was trying to get a lot of money out of this guy. And let's just talk about Tamami for a second. Tamami is like your stereotypical sort of Japanese delinquent. Like he's only two years out of high school, yet he looks like he's in his late 30s. He's got this hilarious flat top. He's super short and he happens to have like a British flag on the front and an American flag on the back. That's something that I'm noticing that a lot of the uniforms in this series, especially from like Josuke and Okuyas, they have all these really weird symbols all over their body, which are always really, really strange, but they do make the characters look a lot more distinctive. The big thing to take away from this episode is that Tamami himself is not going to be a villain. It looks like he's actually going to be something of an ally of Josuke and their group, because he does show up very prominently in the intro and the ending of the show, that and the fact that his stance powers really aren't all that dangerous, but they still can have a pretty cool use. So Tamami tries to get some money out of Koichi, but it doesn't work because Okuyas just ends up beating the crap out of him. And then, of course, you have Josuke who comes in and actually kind of sways him because there's this scene where Okuyas actually ends up punching him in the face. He falls back, his head hits the pavement, and his tooth actually flies out. And then Josuke just comes over and heals him immediately. And that's when he realizes that all these stand users around are probably going to end up beating him, so he decides to escape. However, he knows where Koichi lives, so he decides to go to his house and confront his mother and actually tells him that their wallets got switched up. This is actually all another con from him so that he can use his stand powers on his mother and on his sister so that he can take them for all they're worth. However, Koichi being the smart person that he is, he decides to get his parents and his sister out of the room and he decides to take on Tamami himself. And this is what leads to quite possibly the coolest scene of this week's episode when Koichi stands finally manifests, where the egg hatches and this weird lizard-like creature finally starts to come out. And like I said, for some odd reason, Koichi kind of reminds me of Gohan, just the way he looks with his hair in this week's episode. But strangely enough, his stand, which hatches from an egg, it actually kind of looks like the very first form of Cell from Dragon Ball Z. So you got Gohan who was using a Cell stand. But this thing looks really intimidating and really creepy. And even Tamami is about to shit his pants when he sees this thing because it wraps around his body and it actually starts to punch his face and his arm. But nothing really happens. He feels no damage. When suddenly this lettering starts to appear on his face and on his arms, which say words like crack and smack and bam. So basically what his stand's powers 
can do is they can implant a sound inside of someone's body, kind of like a sound effect that you would see when you're reading a manga, and they're constantly going to resonate and explode out of their body, causing a lot of pain. When you really think about it, it is a pretty devastating ability because Koichi has complete control over the sounds, how intense they can be, and he can continue to place them all over your body. So basically he gets to a point where he's able to beat down Tamami. Tamami realizes that there's no way that he's going to be able to beat this guy, and he decides to make a quick escape, give him all of his money back, and this is also where Koichi sort of goes through a big character change. He acts like a badass when he gets up in his face. He's like, you know what? Tomorrow, you're going to pay me. 500,000 yen. That's right, bitch. You are mine now. And at the end of the episode, that's what happens. Tamami ends up basically being the personal assistant of Koichi, carrying his books for him and being an all-around nice guy. Although I'm sure inside he's not really enjoying this, but it's great to see the reactions from both Josuke and Okuyas as they say, wow, Koichi's kind of a badass now. So what's the rundown on this week's episode of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Diamond is Unbreakable. This episode was really great because Josuke and Okuyas were barely in it at all, but it really focused on the character of Koichi, who is already becoming one of my favorite characters from the show, mostly because of how much he has actually evolved since the beginning of the series. Like I said, he sort of just seemed like a one-off sidekick character in the beginning, and I didn't expect much from him, but he's shown so much in the intro that they had to do something really cool with this character, and he goes through a big visual change in this episode. When he actually activates his stand and gets really pissed off this week, his hair spikes up, making him look like a Super Saiyan, and even by the end of the episode, the hairstyle looks the same, so it looks like it is going to stick around. I really can't wait to see more of what his stand is going to be capable of, too. I can't wait to see more. Uh, more of it in battle and the fact that it actually hatched from the egg and turned into like this weird lizard larval form leads me to believe that it might actually transform into something else and I think that would be really cool as well to see a stand that is constantly evolving along with the character I think that's really great and again the show just had all of the great Jojo style that you would expect lots of ridiculous over-the-top humor and expressions and extreme violence like I said at the beginning when Koichi ran over that cat I was really freaked out, but yet, like I said, at the same time, I wasn't surprised because this is a series that really loves to go into shocking territory. But this one right here was honestly the most laid-back episode that I've seen so far. Not so much like a life-and-death situation, but things that would be really bad for the characters. But it did a great job of expanding on the character of Koichi, and it's great because now he's not going to be completely defenseless. He's actually going to be able to fight back and help Josuke and Okuyas in their battles, which I think are going to be great. I'm actually kind of surprised that didn't even pick up from the events which started in last week's episode when we got to see that brand new stand, the Red Hot Chili Pepper. Although, I think we're going to get to that eventually. It was good that we got to Koichi learning his powers, because now he's going to be even more helpful in actually finding this guy and getting the bow and arrow back. On the technical side of things, another fantastic episode. Everything just looks so stylistic. All of the characters are very distinctive from one another, and that's a really, really big accomplishment. Not one single character just seems to blend into the background, and the color scheme of the show still manages to be a feast for the eyes. Just the look of Koichi's stand is great, but even just looking at the town that they live in, the town of Morio, is so nice to look at. The colors of the sky, the streets, just the trees, everything looks fantastic in this series, and Tamami is a character who I think is going to be a lot of fun. I mean, he's basically just a Japanese delinquent punk, but these are the type of characters I always think are funny, and when you consider it, a lot of these guys are like that. I mean, Okuyasu is basically kind of a similar character with, you know, a little more strength behind his stand, and Tamami has to use his underhanded abilities to con everyone. He's basically the ultimate bullshit artist, and I can't wait to see more of what he's going to be capable of and how he's actually going to be helpful to the group. All I know is Koichi is awesome, he's gone Super Saiyan, and this week's episode was great. So I'm going to give it a 5 out of 5. Check it out, JoJo fans. You're definitely going to see something you like. But if any of you guys did watch this week's episode of Diamond is Unbreakable, please tell me what you thought about it in the comment section below. What did you think of the new character, Tamami Kobayashi? And what about Koichi actually activating his stand this week? What did you think about that? Do you like the big character change that he has gone through? What do you want to see more of from this character in the future? And what do you hope to see from the rest of Diamond is Unbreakable? Please tell me in the comments section below. You guys are awesome! Thank you for watching this review, I really appreciate it. You guys know the drill, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and make sure to look for our weekly podcast show and all of our social media links in the description box below. 
Thank you guys again for watching, and as always, stay dandy, baby!